Hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture in the machine simulation series and this is where we had left off last time where we were trying to determine the direction of the force that produces this electrical torque and we had done that using these equations or rather these diagrams and we had determined that for an induction motor such as this there would be a mechanical force produced on the rotor because the rotor is a current carrying conductor that lies in the magnetic field of the stator. So, when any conductor, current carrying conductor is, is ex or rather experiences an external magnetic field, then in that case a mechanical force is experienced by the conductor due to the interaction between the magnetic field which is produced by the conductor and the external magnetic field. And we had also seen that this direction of the magnetic force, uh, direction of the mechanical force can be determined using Fleming's left hand rule. So we had found out that the force that exists on ex, that is produced on the rotor upper rotor conductor is in this direction and the force produced on the lower rotor conductor is in this direction. So therefore quite obviously if the forces were to be in this direction it is very clear that there would be a torque which is produced and the direction of the torque would be in the counterclockwise direction as it is very obvious from this diagram. So this torque produce will cause the motor to rotate or other rotor to rotate and this is the fundamental principle of operation of an induction motor. So now the question arises now that we know that this is the direction of the force can we determine mathematically an expression for this torque and the answer to that is again yes but before we go directly into that let us take a little detour and examine some of the other finer aspects of the force which is being produced on a current carrying conductor in an external magnetic field and why that is special in the case of a motor. There are several ways in which we can derive the formula of, of the torque which is produced and we can consider all of them even if we use one of them looking into the others is still useful just in terms of understanding how a motor works. So, as always, before I continue with this lecture, if you are interested in in-depth courses, I do have full-length online courses which you can access on my own website which is pythonpowerelectronics.com and this is the home page of this project and on this home page you will find these four buttons. If you click on the button learn, it will take you to the list of courses. So, these are the five courses I have currently. The very first course is simulating power electronic circuits using Python and in this I talk about how you can use Python and Python power electronics to simulate power electronic circuits. The second course I have is called basics of digital signal processing for power engineers and in this I talk about how you can use Python and packages such as the signal package within SciPy to analyze and design filters for power engineering applications. The third course I have is called Simulation of Magnetics for Power Electronics using Python and in this I talk about how you can use Python and Python Power Electronics to simulate and model magnetic components such as inductors, coupled inductors and transformers. The fourth course I have is Control Analysis with Python for Grid Connected Converters and in this I talk about how you can use Python and packages such as the Python Control Package to analyze and design controllers for power engineering applications with a specific example of, example of a single phase inverter connected to a single phase grid. The very last course I have is called Why Specialize in Power Electronics and this is a free course directed towards either junior undergraduates or high school students to tell them about the opportunities and challenges available in power electronics so that they may choose this as their domain of specialization. So all these courses can be found on two platforms which is Decibiz Labs and Udemy. If you click on any of these buttons, it will take you to the link for the course. The link for this page is provided in the description of this video. So if you are interested, please do check out the description. So with this, I will return back to the lecture. So as we already said, we had determined the direction of the force using Fleming's left hand rule. And before we def determined use the Fleming's left hand rule, we had tried to take the very general case of any current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field produced by two independent magnets or other magnetic poles. So now the question then arises, we saw that if 
there are two independent magnetic fields, then there will be an interaction between them which causes them to be distorted. And there are of course rules to determine how this distortion would take place. And once you see that this interaction happens, we can go back to our very very basic experiments. That is what happens when there is when there are two magnets which are brought together then quite obviously they will either attract or they will repel. And here this diagram shows very clearly what happens. That is when two magnets are brought together the magnetic the magnetic lines of force produced by them they will now begin to distort. And the reason for that is because magnetic lines of force cannot intersect. And therefore because they begin to distort there will be regions where there is a high density of magnetic lines of force and there are regions where there is a low density of magnetic lines of force. So this results in a force produced from the region of high density towards the region of low density and this results in the repulsion. So now we can use pretty much the same thought process while trying to determine the nature of force produced on this conductor. Right? We can use exactly the same and we did. However, it's not necessary to use it all the time because for that we have this Fleming's left hand rule. And Fleming's left hand rule is a very convenient rule which can be applied especially in the case of motors when we have a current carrying conductor placed in an external magnetic field. And therefore we determine the direction of direction of magnet mechanical force. So we have to use our left hand and we have to point our forefinger in the direction of the magnetic field. We have to point our, our middle finger in the direction of the current flowing in the, in the conductor and if we hold all three fingers perpendicular to each other like in XYZ axis, the thumb indicates the direction of the mechanical force. Right? And we had used this in this diagram to determine the na nature of mechanical force and we can also use it in this diagram as well. Right? So we had used it. So now that we are here, the question then arises, there are certain questions which could be asked. For example, do the field and the current always have to be at 90 degrees to each other? And even if they are not at 90 degrees to each other, would the mechanical force always be at 90 degrees to the field and the current? So these few questions are there and which can be answered very soon in this lecture and more on the next few lectures also and will also bring out another concept which will help us to determine the actual formula for the force which is being produced. So let me go back here and let me close this because I don't need it. Let me open a new one. So let us start with a simple drawing of a conductor. Okay. This is a current carrying conductor. So in this current carrying conductor let's suppose for example there was a current in this direction. And I'll just draw the direction here. This way and done. All right. So again, not a very nice arrow, but this is it. So this is the direction of current flowing in the conductor. Now, if there was such, maybe I should move this down. So if there was such a current flowing in a conductor, then in that case we know there will be a magnetic field produced by the conductor, right? And we also know that this magnetic field can be or that the direction in which the magnetic lines of force are flowing can be determined using the right hand thumb rule. That is if we hold this conductor by our right hand with the thumb outstretched thumb pointing in the direction of the current then in that case the direction which the fingers encircle the conductor are the direction of mag magnetic lines of force. So if I were to try to draw it and but and also these magnetic lines of force will be in a plane or rather they will be in planes perpendicular to the conductor. Right? This, is a v this was a very basic experiment done by Hans Christian Oersted in 1821. So this is one of the very first experiments in electromagnetism. So if we were to dry, draw, it, draw it, you could say that it would be in this direction, right? And of course there will be several several such magnetic lines of force. Okay. 
and of course if we use the right hand thumb rule we know that all these are pointing in this direction all right so this is of course all these planes are perpendicular to the conductor right they may not look like that but they are perpendicular to the conductor so let me just get rid of this now that we have this and let us now say that we now have an external magnetic field all right this external magnetic field let us suppose we can describe it by this this force right and of course there are many such lines of force but i'm just drawing one okay so there are many many such lines of force all parallel to each other acting perpendicular to the conductor okay now quite obviously if it is perpendicular to the conductor it is in the same plane as the magnetic lines of force produced by this conductor right and therefore you will see immediately an interaction between them and that interaction produces a force and we already have seen that we can use fleming's left hand rule in this case so for example we know that the forefinger i'm using my left hand you can also try to use it while watching this video the forefinger points in the direction of the magnetic field the middle finger points in the direction of the current in that case the thumb will indicate the direction of the mechanical force which means the force produced on this conductor will cause it to jump out of the page or jump out of the screen right if you use your left hand you will see it directly right now in this case you will see that because this magnetic field and the conductor are at right angles to each other we can very conveniently use fleming's left hand rule that is fleming's left hand rule states that all three fingers have to be at 90 degrees to each other the four finger and the middle finger also have to be at 90 degrees to each other so which means that here fleming's left hand rule is directly applicable but now supposing i were to delete this and let me draw another mag magnetic line of force let me draw it in this direction and once again let me put an arrow now here it is not at 90 degrees to this we just draw an angle here this is the 90 degree line and let me draw an angle here this is an angle this is some angle let's say theta right so if this actually this is not this didn't come out well because it's misleading let me draw it all the way here this is the angle theta this software somehow joins lines together so if it comes very close it joins this so this is the angle theta that is between the mechanical line of force man oh sorry the magnetic field and the conductor this is the angle theta so now the question is how will we use fleming's left hand rule right because in fleming's left hand rule the forefinger and the middle finger are at 90 degrees to each other here the forefinger and the middle here the mechanic or rather the magnetic line, magnetic field and the current are not at 90 degrees to each other so the question here is what do we do and the answer is very straightforward all we have to do is to find the projection of this magnetic field onto the perpendicular here right because it is this perpendicular part which has an impact now you might say okay fine what about this uh, what about the projection that is along the current and the projection along the current has no impact the reason is because this magnetic field will be at 90 degrees to the magnetic field produced by the conductor therefore the interaction between them is pretty much almost nothing zero right when they are in the same plane that is when the interaction is maximum so therefore if we have such a magnetic field then in that case the only part that matters is the projection of this magnetic field onto the perpendicular with the conductor so if i were to take this right and if i were to draw another one here as the projection this is like frustrating i don't know why it does this but anyway 
let me just extend it maybe let me go then I'm extending it for the sole reason that it otherwise will connect them together so this is the projection okay this perpendicular here is the projection of the magnetic field onto this line here why because this projection now we can use Fleming's left hand rule just the way we did before right In exactly the same way we did before we can use our Fleming's left hand rule and determine that the me mechanical force is still causing the conductor to jump out of the screen so now the question then arises is there a difference between these two the answer is of course why because because we are using a projection we are no longer con considering the entire magnetic field this projection will be the magnetic field multiplied by sine of this angle right because this projection is basically the sinusoid right so therefore since we are using the sinusoid then of course this magnetic field here which is a projection will be less than the original magnetic field so therefore you can say that the effect has decreased right the effect has decreased now the question you might ask is this Fleming's left hand rule what about the mechanical force will the mechanical force always be acting in perpendicular to this uh, perpendicular to the current and the forefinger or rather the current and the middle finger current and the mechanical magnetic field the answer to that is yes if we consider this magnetic field and the current to be in a plane the mechanical force will always be perpendicular to that plane always and for this in mathematics there is a very convenient formula which is the cross product and that is something I'll talk about in the next lecture but what is important is that in this lecture we need to understand that Fleming's left hand rule is a special case of when the magnetic field and the current are at 90 degrees to each other the magnetic field and the current need not be at 90 degrees to each other and in that case you will see that we can still find the projection of the magnetic field which is at 90 degrees to the conductor and therefore continue with using Fleming's left hand rule but mathematically what we would use is not Fleming's left hand rule but what we would use is the cross product because we now have two vectors we have a vector representing the, representing the magnetic field and we have another vector representing the current so therefore the cross product of these two vectors would produce the vector which represents the mechanical force and in the next lecture we'll talk about this cross product so if you have any doubts feel free to either send me an email or message me on social media whichever is your preference otherwise I will see you next week where we will start talking about the cross product. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye for now.